Well, folks, it seems like Justin Trudeau is on a mission. A mission to outdo even the likes of Joe Biden and Volodymyr Zelensky in the art of creating one geopolitical disaster after another. Yet, you heard me right. This guy is taking the world by storm and definitely not in a good way. Sadly, Rahul Gandhi didn't make the cut for this elite club of geopolitical turmoil makers because he's not the leader of our country. In one fell swoop, Canada's very own PM Trudeau has managed to make both India and Israel his sworn enemies. If that weren't enough, he's also given us a prime example of why India once dubbed Canada as a safe haven for terrorists. But hold on folks, we're just getting started. We're about to dive deep into the world of Trudeau's geopolitical misadventures and unravel the hows and whys behind his knack for stirring up trouble on the global stage. Ah, my viewers, the world has always been a complex place, hasn't it? Following the dastardly attacks on Israel by the terror outfit Hamas, the global stage found itself neatly divided into three camps. The pro-terrorism crowd, those firmly against terror, and of course, the fence -hitters. And just when you thought things couldn't get any more interesting, enter the one and only Justin Trudeau, the self-declared global savior. Now he's decided to stand up for Israel, or so he claims. Although it's worth noting that no one really asked for his advice in the first place. A man Trudeau, in all his wisdom, professed his support for Israel via the magical medium of X, formerly Twitter. In his tweet, he proudly declared, On the phone today, His Highness Mohammed bin Zayed and I spoke about the current situation in Israel. We expressed our deep concern and discussed the need to protect civilian life. We also spoke about India and the importance of upholding and respecting the rule of law. Well, it seems like Trudeau has thrown his hat into the ring alongside the likes of Zelensky and our very own Rahul Gandhi. But let's be real, folks. Justin Trudeau's reputation in world politics is as robust as Rahul Gandhi's standing in Indian politics. Okay, that's maybe slightly less than that, but you get the idea, don't you? Now let's talk about the elephant in the room, shall we? What exactly is the deal with Canada being labelled as a safe haven for terrorists? According to Canadian MP Michael Cooper's recent tweet, things are pretty darn shady up north. He claimed, as Hamas commits atrocities in Israel, the CBC's so-called Director of Journalistic Standards directed journalists to say that rape, torture, kidnapping and acts of violence against civilians should not be called acts of terror. This is blatantly anti-Semitic. Looks like in Canada, now calling a terrorist a terrorist is a big no-no. But wait, there's more intrigue to uncover. Pro-Palestine groups are freely celebrating the Hamas attacks, much like the Khalistani counterparts. Coincidence? Definitely not. Well, my friends, you'll have to stick around because we're just scratching the surface of this geopolitical puzzle. Now, folks, let's talk about class and execution, but not in the way you might think. Call it what you want, but no matter how repulsive or evil the deeds are, the USA has a certain finesse in way they handle the things. It's like they mastered the art of doing terrible things with a touch of style. Now let's shift our gaze to the Great White North where Justin Trudeau is currently navigating some tricky waters. If he is not careful, he is going to end up becoming a certified pariah in both India and Israel. And trust me, that's not a title he wants to wear proudly. You see, our neighbours up north have already given the Canadian administration a bit of a headache with their seemingly innocent moves. But now Trudeau seems to be doubling down by promoting anti-Israel cartels and elements. It's like he's trying to make matters worse on purpose. Recently, after Mr. Trudeau strongly denounced the terrorist attack on Israel, something odd happened. Hamas supporters took to the streets of Toronto with Palestinian flags celebrating the attacks like they were a carnival. It's like they were doing a victory lap for violence right on Canadian soil. Since that video went viral, Canada is facing some serious heat for harboring supporters of violence in the name of separatism, while also trying to portray themselves as champions of fundamental freedom for civilians by antagonizing India. Mr. Trudeau, you can't play the good cop, bad cop in the war against terrorism. It just doesn't work that way. Oh, and let's not forget about Trudeau's social media presence. Check out the comments on any of his posts and you'll find a chorus of his detractors calling him out for his nonsensical attitude. It's like he's competing for the title of the world's dumbest leader. But wait, there's more. Just when you thought it couldn't get any atrocious, the Canadian government is now telling its citizens trapped in the war zone of Israel that they can't do anything to help them because they have a holiday on Saturday, Sunday and Monday. 
Yes, you heard that right. It's like they're saying, sorry, we can't save you, we are on a vacation. So folks, grab your popcorn because the Justin Trudeau show is turning into quite the spectacle. Whether it's his curious choices in diplomacy or his government's holiday-induced apathy, there's never a dull moment when it comes to Canada's latest misadventures on the global stage. It's another matter that in the end, it is the common Canadian who suffers the most, thanks to the never-ending shenanigans of Justin Trudeau.